Good morning students. Today we are going to discuss about the topic that is student T distribution or student T test. So this is uh, student T test is from the paper 2 unit 4. Uh, so why it is said to be student T test and what how to calculate the student T test we are going to discuss in this topic. Now coming up to the topic that is uh, the student T test. So William Seeley, he was an Irish statistician and in uh, 1908, 1908 um, he developed a statistical method for testing the significance between the means of two different sample of small size. So what he did he developed this statistical method unhone ek aisa method develop kiya for testing kis liye in order to test the significance significance hum test karte hain between the means of two different samples samajh liye ek honta hi ek sample hai ek sample another sample if it is y sample sample then what we are doing is that we are just uh, statistically testing the significance dono mean jo hai whatever the two samples means are there we are going to difference or uh, find out the difference between the means of the two samples so why it is said to be the t test because it was first found out by the gosset and uh, gosset william seely gosset 1908 his uh, Pen name. Pen name means you can say that um, the pet name or the pseudonym. The pseudonym of the gosset was student. That's why he named this test as the student T test by his own name or pet name. That's why hence this test is called the student T test. Sometimes it is also described as T distribution. T distribution or sometime it is also said to be the t ratio ratio so you can say that t test is also said to be the t ratio or t distribution or student t test why it is said to be student t test because his pen name was student and the student t test is applied to small sample only so whenever the sample is less than 30 so when you can say when the sample is less than 30 then only this method is applied. So you can say that the student T test is used with the small samples and uh, it was worked out by the WS Gosset and whose pen name was student. Now coming up to the definition so student T test is statistical hypothesis test ek aisa prakar ka hypothesis test hai in which the test in which test statistic follows a student's distribution if the null hypothesis is supported by the data so here also we have to test the hypothesis apan hum kya karne wale hain hypothesis ko test karne wale hain jisme ki ek null hypothesis hona and the student t test kya karega us test ko distribution ko find out karenge whether it support the data or not so how this t test can be calculated student t test can be calculated so the formula for the t test is the difference between the given sample, uh, sample mean so how will you uh, write the formula in order to calculate the t test we have to write down t is equal to difference between the sample mean difference between the sample mean divided by standard error error of the difference between the mean so we have to find out the difference here we have to find out the difference between the sample mean to so consider if two samples are given we have to first find out the mean and then we have to find out the difference of the mean and then we have to divide it by means of the standard error of difference between the mean so coming up to the 
टाइप्स तो यू कैन से दैट स्टूडेंट टी टेस्ट और टी टेस्ट मे बी ऑफ टू टाइप्स यू कैन से इट इज ऑफ टू टाइप्स वॉट आर द टू टाइप्स वन इज अनपेयर टी टेस्ट फ्रॉम द नेम इट सेल्फ इट सजेस्ट दैट इट इज नॉट पेयर दैट्स वाई इट इज सेट टू बी अनपेयर टी टेस्ट एंड नेक्स्ट वन इट इज सेट टू बी द पेयर टी टेस्ट so here also from the name itself it suggests that the data are or observations are paired so if in a certain observation table you can find out the observations if the observations are paired then you can say that so if these observations are paired then all these observation are given and this observations are paired then they are said to be the pair t test and in a given table if the observation is not paired or one of the value is not given consider here these two values are given here two values are given and only this value is given this value is not given so here you can say that the observation are not pair or they can you can say that they are unpaired that's why this type of test is said to be the unpair t test applied where they are applied they are applied to the unpaired data so where to apply first after seeing the observation you can say that the given test is uh, to be applied is paired or unpaired so if you cannot find out the paper Uh, data as a paired or if it is unpaired then you have to apply this test that is unpaired t test so it is applied to the unpaired data of the independent observation made on individuals of two different group from two populations and pair t test it is applied to the pair data so if the data are paired of independent observation from one sample only when each individual gives a pair of observation so here the you can find out the observations are paired now coming up to the working pro procedure for the unpaired t test we know that uh, the calculation there are two types of t test that is unpaired and paired just by seeing the uh, table observation table we can say that which rule is to be applied so if we have to cal calculate for the unpaired t test then we have to follow certain rules so what are the working procedure for the unpaired t test if so in case of unpaired t test we have to follow the five steps first step is to calculate the mean of two samples and find the observed difference between the mean of two samples so first we have to do is that we have to find out the mean and then we have to find out the difference between the mean so how to find out the difference between the mean is we have to find out x1 consider the first sample that is x1 bar you know that this is a mean minus x2 bar so this is the we have to calculate the mean of two samples so here we have calculated the mean of two samples and find the observed difference between the mean of two samples uh, so we have to find out the observed mean of the two samples next is that we have to calculate the standard error of difference between the two samples so we have to find out the standard error so a particular formula is applied for the standard error error that we have to find out just after um, applying in, uh, today we are just going to um, deal with the theory of the unpaired t test as well as the pair t test in the next class we are going to uh, find out all the formulas related to it next is that so with the what is the first step first step is we have to find out the difference between the mean second step is that we have to calculate the standard error and third step is that we have to calculate the t value or t ratios between the observed difference and its standard error by substituting the above value in the formula so next step is we have to find out the formula t value by means of the formula so what is the formula so the formula of the t is student t test that is t is equal to uh, absolute value of the x1 that is mean of 
x sample minus mean of the y sample um, x2 sample therefore t is equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar x2 bar x1 bar you know it it is nothing but the mean divided by standard error so x1 bar and x2 bar is nothing but the mean of the two different sample next coming up to the x s x1 and x x2 these are nothing but the standard deviation so there are certain relationship between the standard deviation and this standard error and n1 and n2 these are the size of the sample so n1 and n2 are the size of the sample s are the standard deviations x1 and x2 are the mean of the two different samples so we know that t is equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar where x1 and x2 bar are the means of the sample given sample so here standard error of x1 bar minus x2 bar can be calculated by means of sd if you get if you have the data like standard deviation then the, it can be applied as standard error of x1 bar minus x2 bar is equals to sd standard deviation of square root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 so it can be further written as sd is equal to uh, summation of x ma x1 minus x1 bar so mean from the mean we have deducted this from uh, x bar x1 minus x bar we have to whole square it this is square plus summation of x2 this is x2 x2 minus x2 bar the whole square divided by n1 n2 minus 2 why minus 2 because we have taken two different samples that's why minus 2 n1 is the first observation and 2 is the next observation this is required for in order to find out the degree of freedom so in this way we have to find out the t value you know that t is equal to absolute of x1 bar minus x2 bar this is the absolute of divided by standard error and standard error can be written as sd is equal to summation of x1 minus x x1 bar the whole square plus summation of x2 minus x2 bar the whole square divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2 so coming up to the fourth step what is the fourth step we have to find out or determine the pool degree of freedom from the formula so we have to find out the degree of freedom you know that degree of freedom can be calculated as df df is equals to n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1 or you can write it down as n1 plus n2 minus 2 so the first step is the calculation of degree of freedom and degree of freedom can be calculated in this two way n1 is the first sample observation and n2 is the next sample observation consider the number of observation in the first sample is 10 so 10 minus 1 will be the 9 and next in the next sample if it is 8 sample is given there for 8 uh, observation is given there 8 minus 1 that will be 7 so in this way we have to calculate the find or calculate the degree of freedom and next last step that is compare the calculated value if the table value is particular degree of freedom so you can say the last step last step is we have to calculate the t value hum kuch to calculate karenge t value and then we have to compare with the table value so a tabulated value will be given and in this t value will be given so this is the calculated value and this is the observed value or you can say that table value so we have to compare the calculated value with 
this is W with the table value at a particular degree of freedom. So in this way we have to work with the uh, unpaired data. So just now we have seen five steps of the unpaired data or how to cal uh, calculate the unpaired data. So thank you. See you in the next um, session with the pair data or the calculation of what is the working procedure of the calc uh, working pro procedure of the pair data. And we are going to solve it one by one with the help of a, with the help of example. See you. See you tomorrow. Thank you.